Well, the first thing to say is that it's different for everybody. That's the first thing. But there is a there is a broad um, there is a kind of broad trajectory of what happens. So if you if you're taking antidepressants, essentially what we think is, is happening is that it's it's helping you. It's taking the peaks and troughs off your experience a little bit. So it might make the lows a little bit less low, but it also might make the highs a little bit less high. And people describe people people's accounts are that it they feel a little bit numb sometimes, that that they can cope a bit better, and that they don't have the the worst part of the real despair is is taken away. So they're buffered. Okay. It's almost like there's some padding in their life and they feel a bit supported. And for some people, that's a really great thing, especially if they're going through a crisis. That buffering, that support can get them back on the track, can get them back doing the things they were doing before and can be the beginning of their recovery and they can get well again afterwards. Okay. It often doesn't happen that way. Often people stay on the antidepressants and stay on them for many years. Many of the people in our study have been on them for like decades. Um, Often one won't work, so the doctor will try them on like 10 different types of antidepressants sometimes, and they often have really, really serious side effects. Such as? Um, intense agitation, um, kind of physical symptoms. Sometimes people have like a kind of dry mouth, or they might feel a bit kind of like, you know, like kind of physical, shaky, um, sleep problems, sex drive, severely limited. Um, sometimes people feel nausea. Um, and I guess the emotional blunting is the one that people really f- struggle with the most. Um, so yeah, we've had people. If, if it if it if it raises up your troughs, that's good. But yeah. if you also aren't getting any kind of uh, yeah. highs or stimulation from the environment yeah. over time, that must yeah. just again disconnect you from everything. Yes, okay. and and people feel that they and that they don't feel them re- their real selves because they can't. You know, there's something about just the highs and lows of life, they're, when they're real, they're real, and you're, you're learning from them, they're, they're teachers, you know, our pain is our teacher, we can learn about what's not working for us, but if everything's just buffered, people sometimes describe they're kind of like, they feel a bit better, but they're just kind of like bumping along through life, and they're not, it does feel less meaningful. Um, and we've had people in our study having to, a few people have had to come off the antidepressants because the side effects have been so bad and they've felt so awful, that they just haven't been able to stay. Mm. But then I guess, for me, the thing that I'm most concerned about with antidepressants is that um, they are they are supposed to be a kind of temporary thing to get you back on track rather than a long lifetime treatment because, um, you know, that's that's the opposite of a treatment. A treatment is supposed to make something better. But if you have to keep taking it forever, then it's not actually, it's just like a crutch. It's not actually healing the problem. It's not working at the root cause. People often just, like one of the participants of our first study said that antidepressants are like taking a painkiller for a toothache. It just, it numbs the pain, but the infection is still there. Whereas he described psychedelics as like a kind of antibiotic that actually stop the, the infection at the root. So people describe this feeling of it, it's not doing anything for the root cause, it's just helping me, the, helping the symptom, helping the pain, it's numbing me. But yeah, so it's, it's, it's a kind of temporary numbing thing rather than a deep treatment, so it's not supposed to be for life. But people often stay on them because when they try to come off them, the withdrawal can be absolutely horrific. And I was amazed in the first study, I had no idea but some of the people with their withdrawal processes, it was unbearable to watch. Wetting the bed, electric shocks going off in the brain. It can be really, really tough. And, and it can be supported with the health, you know, healthcare professionals can really support people through that. So anyone going through that, I'd urge people to get psychological support and really, you know, stay in contact with their, with their GP and, and really ask for the help they need because it's a, it's, it requires a lot of courage sometimes. Not always, some people find it okay. But I was surprised, and so I think for many people, because the withdrawal is so hard, they stay on them. Okay. And it's an amazing business model. It's an it? amazing business model. <sighs> unlike, a... unlike the psychedelic business model, which maybe yes. we'll touch on at the end, yes. which is kind yes. of a few doses yeah. of sometimes a plant yeah. that is not patented. <laughs>